Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So in part one, we covered the tools and materials you need to make a lino cut print. And today we're going to draw our sketch and I'm going to show you how I transferred onto the block. So hopefully you've thought of some ideas for your print, but I'm also going to link to a download for the line drawing that I'm using for my print. So feel free to use it, you know, download it, copy it, modify it, whatever you want. It's just kind of a starting point if you're looking for some inspiration. So there's really endless possibilities of how you want your lino cut to look. For this drawing, I'm going to do something really simple. I'm going to use just these planters here and do a small, you know, pot with some plants coming out of it. So let's jump into drawing. So some people really like to go loose on their drawings and just kind of get an idea for their prints. I really like to have a really good idea of what my final print's gonna look like before I really even start working on my block. So it's really just up to you how much how much freedom you want, you know, when you're carving versus you have a, a more structured sketch in the beginning. Because I usually end up scanning it into the computer and then I'll, I'll play with the size and make it, make it fit the block that I'm gonna be working on. I just try to keep the orientation, you know, landscape or portrait, things like that in mind when I'm doing my, my sketching. All right, so now I have my small illustration that I sketched up of what I want my print to kind of look like. So I'm going to scan this into the computer and make a couple changes to it. The main thing being enlarging it so it fits the, you know, the size of the block because I drew my sketch pretty small. But if you're more comfortable drawing directly on the block or, you know, going straight from your sketch onto the block, that's completely fine. You don't have to scan it or any of that. I just like playing on the computer a little bit. So a couple of quick things to keep in mind before you put your image onto the block is anything that you put on the block when you print it is going to be flipped. It's going to be the reverse image. So that's really important with things like text. You know, you want the text to be backwards on your block so when it's on the paper, it reads correctly. But it's also important for things like if you're using a photo of a, like a landscape for reference, you want your final image to print the right direction so it's recognizable or like a bridge, something like that. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're drawing and, and creating your blocks. Always make sure you have everything flipped on the block how you want. Because it's a bummer to spend all this time carving and realize you, you have a word that you can read on the block and when you print it, it's backwards. And so now I've printed out my image, the size that I want it to be, and I made a couple changes in Photoshop to the line weight and stuff like that. And now I'm gonna go through how to transfer it onto a block. So now that I have my illustration printed out, I flipped it before I print it, so when I, after it's transferred and I end up printing it, you know, it'll be a reverse image of this. So like I said, you can draw directly on the block. You know, you can use a, a Sharpie or, you know, different markers. Sometimes if you use a Sharpie, when you go to print, the Sharpie kind of stains the block and it might pick up on your prints as you go if you're trying to use a different color than black in your print. But in my case, I'm just gonna be printing this in black. So even if the Sharpie transfers on the paper, it's gonna be okay. So there's a couple different methods to get a, a drawing onto a block. You know, there's a method where you can transfer a toner print, you know, from a photocopier directly onto it using a, a solvent. There's all sorts of you know, matte medium methods where you can apply a medium and then get the image to transfer off onto the block. And maybe in the future I'll go through those. But for this project, I'm gonna keep it really simple and just use this transfer paper. It's just like carbon paper. This is a wax-free version, which I like to use. And I just bought a sample pack of it and it comes in you know, all different colors. So you can just pick one that's, you know, contrasts against your, your lino cut block. So for this one, I think I'll use the blue. I'm first just gonna cut this out so it's the right size. And now just using some of this blue painter's tape, I'll just position my block, position the image right where I want it. Now that it's taped down the top, I can flip it up, look at it, make sure it's transferring good as I go. Now I can just slip this transfer paper underneath and then just draw on top of all my lines. You can see I can check as I'm going and it makes a really nice strong transfer that'll, that'll make it really easy. So I'll just go through and do the same thing for the rest of this drawing. So now I have all my line work drawn on through the blue transfer paper. So now I can peel up the paper, peel up this. Now I have my drawing ready to go. So if you're careful when you're carving, you might be able to leave just the, the blue transfer and just go ahead and you know start carving and leave it. But I think in, in time, this is gonna wear off as you handle the block and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go over the whole thing with a, a black Sharpie, just so it's really permanently on there. I think it'll just make things a little bit easier. So this gives you a little bit more freedom to, to change your design as you go and maybe make it look a little bit more you know, hand-drawn rather than a direct copy of your original drawing. 
kind of a few steps removed from your, your original sketch. And you know, I'll fill in these shadow areas as I, when I'm carving, but I'm just drawing some lines in here so I know kind of where I want those shadows and highlights to be. So now everything's transferred and copy to go over with the Sharpie, I decided to add a couple more things. So I think I want to kind of frame the image a little bit. So I'm going to add a border. I don't know if I'm going to like this when I you know, finally get to printing it. But if I don't like it, I can always carve it away. But I can't add it back, you know, once it's gone. So I'd rather just leave it there for now. And I think I might see what a little, little shadow looks like as well over here. And again, it might not look good when it's printed. You can always go in afterwards and, and carve that stuff out. All right, so we have our image all transferred onto the lino block and ready to go. So the last thing to do is to create a registration jig, which will allow us to register our block and our paper when we go to print. And also we need to make a bench hook, which will make it so we can put the block on the edge of our desk and it won't slide around when we're trying to carve it, kind of keeping it in place. So make sure to check out the next video for that and I'll see you then, thanks. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page, where I post behind the scenes photos, as well as other patron rewards. Thanks!